Hey, how's it going guys? Zedai here. So today I will be bringing in my full review after getting a platinum trophy for Rise of the Ronin. Now, I have put in almost 50 hours and I finally got that platinum trophy. Initially, I wasn't even expecting to go for it, but nevertheless, because genuinely I had a good time with this game, this is why I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go for this Platinum. And I did, and I'm kind of glad about that as well. Because to be honest with you, it wasn't difficult, it wasn't also overbearing, you kinda had to pay attention to what you were doing, follow up through things and get some of the collectibles, but thankfully the game doesn't require you of getting that 100% completion. Nevertheless, I wanted to mention some of the good, some of the bad regarding of this game and what I've experienced and just simply going through this adventure and the story. So, let's get into the positive side first. I like the new implementation that this game has of, as an example of gliding and of course the grappling hook. Now, they are great additions. Now, it's not like as if they're, you know, something new or innovational. It's not that. But, also regarding the grappling hook, I'm actually kind of disappointed about that feature because it is an addition. I like it to have, right? For it to be here, it's good. It's in a good addition, but it's too restrictive and limited. Basically, there's only designated spots that you can actually use this grappling hook and yeah, you can actually traverse or get through some sort of a location. I think they need to kind of open up a little bit more on this and actually let us use freely. Gliding though, like I mentioned, that is free usage. I absolutely adore it. It's a fantastic addition, but again, it's not a new. But this is definitely is in my good books. So, because there's a good, there's, I want to get into the bad category of the parts of, well, uh, what Rise of the Ronin really does pretty bad. And I'm gonna get into it. It is the main story. In fact, my, I just, in general, the story. It's quite samey. It doesn't have anything genuinely interesting. And it's just, in fact, confusing story. Like, I was so confused most of the time. At the end, I was like... I don't give a shit about these cutscenes. They do look good though, that's definitely positive. They look fantastic. But my goodness, where is this game going? Because the main problem that this game has is the dynamic way of you can make your own choices. And that is a problem because Team Ninja, the developers of this game, they didn't really thought through it of how to they wanted to implement decision making within their game. And it really shows. They've done a very, very poor job. In fact, I would argue and say, you get rid of the system completely, and I think this game would have been better for it. It's just that the way that they've done with this branching story uh, lineup and just kind of it really lacks the impact, and it was not very intuitive or well done at all. And it just loses me most of the time, and I'm constantly thinking, who the hell is this person again? What did they do? What's the importance of them being in this part of the story? Like, I don't give a damn, you know what I mean? Like, it's not as if I was completely zoned out from the story. It was not that, that was not the case at all for me at the beginning. First, maybe 30 hours, I was really into it. And because also, mind you guys, I have been going for all the trophies at the same time while playing through the story. Maybe that is also a little bit of an issue because I was doing all the side quests and everything, all the collectibles and all the objectives within the open world. And maybe that's also why it was the, a little bit of an issue because I couldn't really keep up properly what the story had to tell me. But nevertheless, it never really gripped me even at the first impressions I think I already mentioned that this story was nothing special at least so far that I've experienced like this game is genuinely a f one fantastic word unremarkable it's just unremarkable unfortunately so even though it's just kind of the direction that they go with as an example if you guys may know that rise of the Ronin has a kind of like a dual character structure and you can choose uh, your <laughs> a counterpart basically right and in this case in this game i've been playing as a chick as a female a blonde female like she's gorgeous i want her to dress up nicely for the first time i ever play as the main protagonist being as a female character because i usually play as a male character because i want to relate to them a little bit more nevertheless i made the decision of going with something different this time but then i the, my counterpart was a male character that I don't know why, I decided to make both of them gorgeous and beautiful. I put a little bit of time and effort into these characters, and while I do get to see interactions between these two characters, my goodness, don't get me started with the interactions. 
Fuck me, this is bad, negative, I'm sorry, but this game really needed a proper voice uh, voice acting for our main uh, pr protagonist. To some, some extent, our character does talk, to some extent, but most of the time she's mute, or he's mute, right? It depends which character you decided to create. And it's just, uh-huh, mm-hmm, and or, or just shakes his head or her head and doesn't answer, and it's just so awkward man and there's so few lines of dialogue in here it's ridiculous i'm sorry this game needed a fully voiced protagonist it could have been a female or male doesn't matter if you can make that decision if it would have been too expensive just go with the just one character don't let us make the decision of how we can craft or create this sort of character i don't know uh, it's just a lost opportunity in my personal opinion now let's get into the you know turn things around and go on the positive side. I love the fashion, it's just such a historical setting. I love it, it's so fascinating. I love how they actually did conflicts and the war and the battles that they've gone through and just the sacrifices that they had to make. And I like the way also our characters, well, the characters that you meet at least, they do die. And I've really noticed this and some ways you can see how, what kind of decision that you could have made that could have actually perhaps saved this character's life. But then there's also a negative part of the story within this part. I'm noticing I'm noticing this too many times with Team Ninja games. And this happened with Neo, Neo 2, Wulong Fallen Dynasty, and now with this game again. I don't understand why is their fascina fascination of dueling characters, like maybe they're friends, and you just simply want to duel, right? Okay, you're doing it through, through the story or side quests. Right, okay, that's first, that's perfectly fine. You have a very, fant very, very good friend and you're dueling him, whatever, maybe for practices or just simply for a duel or something or sense of achievement or whatever. But then you're using real swords, you're using real weapons, metal, right? And you, you're gonna kill the fella. You can see all the blood, the gush, the penetration that you just stab the guy through his gut and it's just like, he just goes down in his knee. Oh, the. And the next minute a cutscene plays, and, oh, that was a fantastic fight. You've become so much stronger. So like, what the fuck is... It's stupid. Really stupid. But then the next minute, when there's like a side objective or maybe a main quest, I do the exact same thing. But then randomly this guy goes on the knee and then he dies. And I'm just like, well, what? It's, re it's repetitive. It's ridiculous. It doesn't work. Team Ninja, please move away from this. If you want to introduce dual characters do um you know uh, fights right just let them constantly and always use wooden swords and thankfully they do have it here they do have wooden swords uh, katanas and different variations of uh, weapons that you would like to use so you make sure you don't kill these people and i like this it really is a nice addition but you have to make sure that you always have it it's just uh anyway this just uh, i just wanted to rant off about this i'm really annoyed by it <laughs> Okay, so I want to mention this is a fantastic thing. I love this. First time when I playing the, uh, started playing this game, <clears throat> I already mentioned it too. Just that it has fantastic quality of life features. As an example, one big example I have to give. Even though, honestly, I didn't really utilize it as much as I perhaps should have. So you can let your character automatically go to places where you locate of your own choosing. And he or she just goes on a horse and makes his way over there to the location that you want him to go. And he makes his way over. Now, this hasn't been not done, because I believe in Assassin's Creed Odyssey you had the same feature, but here I think it's done far better, and the AI is a lot smarter due to that. Oh God, don't, don't let me start with the AI, my goodness, because there's some very smart characters, especially in the battles, and it clearly shows Team Ninja is the one that making this game, because during the battles, this is tough, the game is tough. But when the stealth component comes in, oh my god, this game just crashes and burns. It's awful. The assassinations is your best friend. It really is. You go up and you kill this opponent, this enemy, right in front of your other enemy that's literally staring at us while I murder his friend. He does nothing. He doesn't notice a, a, a thing. I don't know what's with the vicinity of vision. Why can they not see you? Or are they just brain dead? And also, I'm noticing that if you're on a roof and you kill people or enemies and you go up on the roof, you can escape the pursuit. It's like they can't climb. You see, this 
something of a positive. There's always a bloody negative. And it really is frustrating. Okay, let's get into the not a positive side. I love the combat. It's slick, it is satisfying, it's adaptable, it's just got that Souls-like experience. And in the past of Team Ninja titles, it also, of course, has many variations. I absolutely adore it. Team Ninja never failed with their combat styles and combat in general. Neo, Neo 2, Wulong Fallen Dynasty, they were all fantastic and it stays true to its course even in this game, Rise of the Ronin. And I'm very, very much glad about that. But again, because there's a positive, there's a negative. Fuck. And it's not good. Okay, I'm not sure if this is a really big deal. But the RPG element within this game is not very good. So there's there's an overwhelming amount of gear. There's an overwhelming amount of stats that you kind of have kind of have to pay attention to. It's just this is a number crunching game. It's not good. Every time when I get new armor, all I do is simply okay, I'll put on the higher level armor. That's what I do. The same thing with my weapons. Okay, I like to use. It's just a katana and I'll make sure only use katana that's constantly levels up while I play through the story okay I'll get this katana and but I notice I constantly overbearing because there's so much stuff that you can get and it's overwhelming unfortunately it's not good it's not good and as due to this I think they need to scale back down on the RPG elements, they need to rethink their system because it stays the same as it was in Neo 1. And it's been too long already. They need to kind of think things through, if that makes sense. So, of course, there is another uh, another bad part about this, about this game. Very, and I mean very unremarkable open world. It's very bland open world design. I just do not like it. On top of that, it's outdated as well. I do not like the way that they have done about it. Like they have so, sort of kind of tried to implement some things like secrets or things to find within the open world. And I do appreciate one big element of the open world, especially while going for the Platinum Trophy. I'm th super thankful that they have put in markers for the collectibles for example you have to collect 100 cats and you have to do something around 50 photographs you have to do so yeah you, you actually have a portable camera somehow in this era <laughs> and anyway you take photos and you have to collect cats basically basically that's one of the main elements of the collectibles there's more but of course these were the two of the big ones i'm talking about and so in this case uh what i do is basically i do these you have to make through go through all these objectives these markers and it really helps you out so that's definitely positive for me but the open world and the way it's done and it's very outdated design it's just nothing really interesting it doesn't really pay off i clearly can see that they have taken a lot of inspiration from ghost of tsushima you know this game actually now that i think about ghost of tsushima and comparing with this game this is ghost of tsushima but an extreme budget version this is ghost of tsushima that wannabe. It really does seem like that. But they have failed on many categories. And the only thing that they kind of surpass... I, I literally had to take a moment and just think about it. Like, what the hell did they surpass? Because in my opinion, I don't think they even surpassed in terms of the combat. I think Ghost of Tsushima still is a better combat version game. Shit, they didn't do nothing better than Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, this is a pure budget version of Ghost of Tsushima through and through. I don't mean anything by it that... I I hate this game. Like I said, I do not. Because I still ended up going for Platinum. If I would have actually hated this game, I don't think I would have gotten the Platinum Trophy for this. Uh, nevertheless, another bad thing, and I think it's the obvious one that a lot of people, and myself included, have mentioned it already since the very first presentation of this game's gameplay, and everybody was very, very brutal and criticized this game about. I'm talking about the quality, the visuals. And I want to be honest, it simply is uh, unacceptable, in my opinion. Now, perhaps maybe they decided to make this decision because they, because this is art. Maybe this is just their style. But I'll argue and say, what about Neo? What about Neo 2? 
Well, it's just they are far better looking games than that. These two are already way better looking games than Rise of the Ronin. So why was the decision to make such a poor quality a game and yet your past titles done such a far better job? And don't tell me because they tried to make a new IP, so they went there with different decisions in different directions. That, I call that bullshit because, well, they've taken all of the mechanics and the design that they've created in the past games, and they pretty much implemented it in here. So don't tell me that you can't, like, there's no excuse in this case. I think this game is inadequate in terms of the visuals. I think that this game is just bad looking. I think this game is a very, like, like, this is an era of 2014. That's just... This game is a... Like, if I would have put it in the title of this video for this game, uh, my full review after receiving the, and getting a Platinum Trophy, Rise of the Ronin is a unremarkable budget version of Ghost of Tsushima and outdated. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> wow, I think I, I think I lashed out on this game quite a bit. I do apologize. I didn't really... Do tend to go on a rant on this uh, this hardcore god goodness me okay well hopefully you can uh, you know excuse me on this part on these parts of the negatives like and the rants negative parts of the game are qualified definitely and the positives too but the rants i hope you can excuse me on those all right guys thank you so much for watching i'm gonna be letting you go tomorrow's video or the following day i will do the more or less like a trophies adventure tr uh, how i you know got every single individual trophies for rise of the ronin you can definitely expect that all right i see you guys all like and subscribe I see and um yeah have a good one